Hello everyone, this is the CircuitPython Weekly for July 12th, 2021. It's the time of the week when we get together to talk about all things CircuitPython. I'm Jeff and I'm sponsored by Adafruit to work on CircuitPython. CircuitPython is a version of Python designed to run on tiny little computers called microcontrollers. Development of CircuitPython is primarily sponsored by Adafruit, so if you want to support them and CircuitPython, consider purchasing hardware from Adafruit.com. This meeting is hosted on the Adafruit Discord server. You can join anytime by going to adafru.it slash discord. We hold the meeting in the CircuitPython dev text channel and the CircuitPython voice channel. The meeting typically happens as it does today, uh, Mondays at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific, although we do move it when it coincides with a U.S. holiday. When the meeting time is changed, we put it on the calendar, which is linked from the notes document. Um, this meeting is recorded. We record audio from the voice channel and video of the text channel. If for any reason you don't like to have your voice recorded, you're still welcome to participate by leaving us notes. Uh, the video of the meeting will be posted on YouTube and an audio only version will be released as a podcast. If you find we're not available on your favorite podcast service, please let us know. As I mentioned, there is a note stock to accompany the meeting and recording. If you, uh, can't make it to the meeting and like to participate anyway, you can leave your hug reports and status updates in the document and we'll read them off during the next meeting. It also contains timestamps to go along with the video after the fact, so you can use the doc to help skip to the parts of the video that interest you the most. The meeting has been running 60 to 90 minutes lately, so the option to skip around can be very helpful. Uh, a link to the notes document is posted to the CircuitPython dev channel on the Adafruit Discord every week. Check the pinned messages to find the latest notes doc. This meeting is held in five parts. The first part is community news, where we take a look at all things CircuitPython and Python on hardware from the community. And it's also a preview of the Python on con microcontrollers newsletter. Next up after that is the state of CircuitPython, the libraries, and Blinka. It's a statistical look at the whole project, a chance to consider the numbers uh, separate from kind of the nitty gritty of what we're all up to. After that, we get to the participatory parts, Hug Reports is an opportunity to highlight the good things folks are doing, taking the time to recognize the awesome folks in our community. Next, after that, is Status Updates, an opportunity to sync up on what we've been up to. We invite you to take a couple of minutes and talk about what you've been doing in the last week since the last meeting, and what you'll be up to over the next week until the next meeting. And finally, In the Weeds, an opportunity for more long-form discussions. Whether these discussions come out of status updates or something that you've thought up ahead of time, we'll take these in the order that they are in the notes document. And that covers how the meeting will go. With that, I will scroll back to community news in the notes document. Big number one, CircuitPython Day is August 6, 2021. Set your calendars. We've decreed arbitrarily that 8-6-2021 is the snakiest day of the year, and it's also this year's CircuitPython Day. So uh, we've got about three weeks, I think, to plan this, and we are talking internally about what we'd like to do, and we also would love to hear from community members uh, what they would want to do. I think the hashtag is hashtag CircuitPythonDay2021. Check out the newsletter for a little more info about that. Next up, CircuitPython and MicroPython. There was a live stream hosted by Michael Kennedy last week with Scott and Damien on July 8th. And uh, you can catch the coverage on the Adafruit blog or watch it on YouTube. Uh, last week, late, Dan released CircuitPython 7 Alpha 4, which is the highest numbered version of CircuitPython ever. It is relatively stable, but contains a number of issues still to be addressed for version 7.0.0. The Python APIs it presents may change. The notes document has a short list of notable additions to 7.0. Um, so check that out. There's more on the Adafruit blog and of course on GitHub if you want the full release notes. Mu110 beta 5 is out and is available on the downloads page. This beta release may contain bugs or unfinished features. Um, the Mu team had hoped for a regular fortnightly release tempo, but due to the voluntary nature of Mu's development, and because some of the updates in this release were quite challenging, this release is later than the developers have planned. You can also check out the Mu blog. Next up, 
Popularity. Polls for 2021. Python C and Java all compete for most popular programming language in the Tyobi index. Uh, it is near a dead heat among those three, so check it out on Tyobi and the Adafruit blog. More trends and numbers. The 2021 Global IoT Trends Report from Newark. They surveyed their global customer base between September 2020 and December 2020, and they've compiled the results, which you can now read on the Newark website. And finally, a project from the community. Quote, now that my Sphero RVR drives to specific coordinates on the floor, I can get my apartment delivery system online for use during quarantine. Powered by an Adafruit Metro M4 running CircuitPython and elements of the SDK. There's a link to Twitter where there is more info. There is a lot more than this in the CircuitPython weekly newsletter. Our community-run newsletter emailed every Tuesday. The complete archives are online. Check the notes doc for a link. It highlights the latest Python on hardware news from around the web, including CircuitPython, Python, and MicroPython. To contribute your own news or project, you can edit next week's draft on GitHub and submit a pull request with the changes. You can also tag a tweet with hashtag CircuitPython on Twitter or email cpnews at adafruit.com. And that wraps up the overview of the community news. Moving on to the state of CircuitPython, the libraries, and Blinka. Once again, this is a statistics-based overview of the health of the project. Uh, overall, and this is across the CircuitPython core, the libraries, and Blinka, we had 41 pull requests merged by 15 authors. Thank you to all of those. Um, she is not new to contributing, but I want to highlight that Katni had a contribution to the core in this past week, so thank you very much for that. Uh, D. Griswo, G. M. Paris, and Fear Zero are some names that I am less familiar with, so I want to thank those contributors as well. On the reviewers' side, we had 12 reviewers. Um, I want to thank Tio Mitch because I asked him for a review in an area of the code where he had been working, and he kindly... Um, replied and suggested some improvements. And um, of course, hey, Jose Posada, uh, a more recent addition to the, the review team, uh, thanks to you as well. And with that, I will ask Scott to tell us about the core. Hello. So we had 11 poll requests merged from nine different authors. Thank you to all of our authors. Uh, we had six reviewers for those nine or those eleven pull requests. So thank you to all of our reviewers, uh, and shout out to Tio much again for being a and Katni our new reviewers on this list. I think as well, and Microdev chimed in too. So thank you to those relatively new reviewers. We have seventeen open pull requests, which is quite good for us. Um, we're usually we've been above twenty for a while, so it's nice to be under twenty. Uh, we do have a couple of pull requests that are over 200 days old, so we should take a look at those. I think uh, a couple of them actually did get pinged, which is great. Um, so if somebody's looking for uh, a way to get uh, started in core development, um, either doing reviews is a great way, or um, also picking up some of these older PRs is really, really helpful as well. Um, there's, I know there are a couple PRs for just adding board support. Um, so if you happen to have one of those boards, it would be awesome if you would just pick it up and get it merged in. We'd love to support uh, all the boards we can. Uh, we have five closed issues by four people and nine open by seven people, so we're net up four issues for a total of 472 open issues. Uh, the way that we keep track of our issues is we use milestones to determine um, kind of prioritization for those of us sponsored by Adafruit. Um, we don't have a whole lot of contributions contributions outside of that that's kind of why it's it's adafruit sponsored prioritization um but again if if non-funded folks want to help on this that's that's great as well we'd love to hear your feedback um so we have 74 open issues for 70 which is clearly a huge number and uh we need to go through that milestone list and kind of decide where things should go um we have 372 long-term issues and six support issues so those six support issues are likely a bit stale. We could probably just close those. Um, support, uh, the support milestone tends to be, just be questions and things that people have, uh, not things that are like actionable to the core itself. And then we have five issues not assigned to milestones. So this is uh, kind of keeping track of how well we're doing keeping on top of the new issues coming in. 
Um, this number is not uh, too worrisome. We do try to uh, stay on top of that, and uh, it's generally kind of what's come in over the weekend that hasn't been looked at since then. So I uh, should be able to get on top of that this week. Uh, overall, uh, we're 7-0 turned out to be, I think, bigger than we all expected, which is great. Um, and Dan did Alpha 4, which is really helpful. And so people, please try. Uh, everybody, feel free to use Alpha 4. Let us know what you think. We're going to really try to drive uh, into the beta phase, which is kind of like we're not going to break anything else. And then, um, and then quickly, hopefully, get to the release candidates as well. Uh, we need to figure out, out of those 70-plus issues, which ones we actually want to block a new stable release on. But it's been long enough that I think we want to, to push towards a stable release so we can get people onto 7 off of three, uh, 630. Um, so that's it for the core. Thank you, Scott. Next, I will ask Katni to tell us about the libraries. Hello. So this is a section about the libraries. It is about the Adafruit CircuitPython libraries, which is everything that starts with Adafruit underscore CircuitPython underscore, as well as a few others such as Cookie Cutter and the Community Bundle. Um, so we had uh, 28 pull requests merged by six authors, which means somebody's putting in a lot of work, and eight reviewers, uh, leaving us with 47 open pull requests, which is good because that number is going down. Uh, we have 12 issues closed by five people and eight open by eight people, leaving us with 317 open issues. Uh, three of those are labeled good first issues. If you are interested in contributing to CircuitPython on the Python side of things, go to circuitpython.org slash contributing. There is a list of um, open pull requests and a list of open issues. Uh, you can search the issues by uh, label. A good first issue is a good place to start. There are not very many of them at the moment. We need to curate that a little bit better, but uh, that's a good place to start if you're new to things. Or if you're looking for something a little more complicated, bug or enhancement are excellent ones to search. Uh, take a look, see whether anything speaks to you. Um, if you're interested in picking up an issue, just comment on it. Uh, in terms of reviewing, if you're interested in a uh, in a in get joining us <clears throat> in terms of reviewing. Uh, just check out a PR, um, see what there is that you can uh, take a look at, syntax, um, spelling, that sort of thing. If you don't have the hardware, if you do have the hardware, feel free to test it and just leave a comment and let us know. And once you're more comfortable with it, we can level you up to actually joining the review team. Um, and these are all ways to contribute to the project uh, on the Python side of things. Uh, in terms of library updates in the last week, we have had no new libraries and a short list of updated libraries. Um, so overall, we're still working through all the currently open PRs and trying to get through the older ones. It's great to see all the new contributions, both to the Adafruit libraries and the community bundle. There have been a number of significant changes to the libraries and the core that are breaking changes. And the plan is to aggregate a list of all those changes and prioritize in what order we should address them in terms of updating code examples and learn guides. So I'll be doing that this week so we can get started on updating all the relevant code and guides. And thanks to everyone who's been helping out with this. Thank you, Katni. And finally, to round out this section, um, Maker Melissa will tell us about Blinka. Hello. Hi. Uh, Blinka is our CircuitPython compatibility layer for MicroPython, Raspberry Pi, and other single board computers. And this week, we had two pull requests merged by two authors and one reviewer. There are three open pull requests now amongst all the different repositories, and there were three closed issues by one person, and one open by one person, and that leaves a net of 60 open issues. There were 11,166 Pi Wheels downloads in the last month, and we currently are supporting 75 boards. And that's it. Thank you, Melissa. Next up is Hug Reports. So this is a round robin in alphabetical or uh, document order, as the case may be. I'll start with myself, go down the list, and then head back to the top and, and let everybody have a chance to give their reports. Um, so I would like to give a hug to Dan H. for the configurable USB descriptor feature in 7, and also for the alpha release. And of course, a hug for everyone who contributed to alpha 4. A uh, big thank you to Lady Ada for fixing a problem with OLED displays that arose when she added support for the one on the macro pad. And to um, 
Damien and Jimmo for reviews on the split type objects pull request. Uh, more about that later, but it's just really gratifying to see uh, more cross communication between the MicroPython and CircuitPython groups. Uh, so that's what I have. Uh, next up is Jerry. Hi. Um, let's see. So yeah, hug to, to Dan for and everybody else involved with getting 7.0 Alpha 4 released. Nice job. And uh, it's a group hug to everybody else. And there's the cat right on cue. Meow. All right. You are up, Katni. All right. Uh, so my first hug today is to you, Jeff, for helping me create my first circuit Python module. Um, I brought it up in, in just terms of realizing it was far more complicated than I thought it was. And you offered to help and walk me through it. And uh, that was super helpful. And thank you very much for that. Um, it was really satisfying to be able to do that. Uh, to Dan for doing the 7.0 uh, Alpha 4 release and everyone else involved in getting to the point where we could release it. To Les Samurai Propre for putting together a list of learn code that's using a deprecated argument as a starting point for addressing the change. To John Park for feedback regarding the development of the Macropad library for testing the code and getting me set up with examples for the MIDI documentation. To Sylvia for their first library PR. And to Dan for the fix to the macro pad display. Um, it was something he had a lot of trouble duplicating. Basically, uh, with before the fix, the display would just scramble and turn into garbage um, within a minute or two for me with every single thing I was testing um, and required a hard reset to fix. So it was good that I was able to test it so thoroughly. Um, so we knew the fix worked when it was no longer causing me problems, but it was a very, very frustrating issue uh, before the fix was put in. So thanks very much for that. Thank you. Uh, next is Maker Melissa. Hello, let's see here. Uh, I want to just give a group hug to everyone. Thanks for that. Up next is Scott. Hope you got your notes done. I saw you were just working on them. <laughs> Hello. You know, all, lots of good stuff. Uh, first, thanks uh, to you, Jeff, for the string compression improvements and to Mitch for the quick review. Uh, Hug reports Jerry N for being a consistently thoughtful contributor to our community. Uh, that's related to moderation, but also just being really helpful. Thank you, Jerry, and I'm so happy to have you here. Uh, hug report to Michael Kennedy, M. Kennedy, and D.P. George for the good podcast discussion last week for the Talk Python to Me episode that we streamed and will come out uh, officially this week. Uh, hug report to Sylvia for their first contribution to the libraries with the TCS 34725 changes. And lastly, uh, I don't know if this is on people's radar, so I thought I'd hug report this as well, but... Uh, Michael Welling and TNT uh, got CircuitPython going on their open source Pi 5 chip uh, test code. So it's actually running on an FPGA, but they're targeting uh, the Google open source chip design stuff. So it, they're hoping to actually have a RISC V uh, system on a chip that uses PS RAM and stuff. Uh, and they're they're specifically targeting MicroPython and CircuitPython for how they would design a chip for it. So they got CircuitPython running uh, last week or over the weekend, and it uh, looks pretty neat. So hard report to them as well. All right, that is a lot. Uh, looping back to the top, I have notes from another people, a number of people, so I will just read those off. Charles Burniford writes, hug, group hug to everyone who brought us version 7.0 so far. From Dan... A group hug for everyone contributing to CircuitPython development and library development. I was impressed with the number of contributors to 700 Alpha 4. David Gloud says group hug to all involved in 70 Alpha 4. I feel like it's like a big thing. 70 Alpha 4. Uh, and last up, Foamy Guy, who is unable to attend today, writes a hug report to Le Semari Pupre for looking into an issue around on disk bitmap as well as pulling together a list of libraries that will require fixes related to it, and a group hug. That wraps up hug reports, so we proceed to status updates. This is the time we invite you to let us know what you've been working on since we last 
talked and what you hope to get up to in the next week or so. It's a round robin similar to Hug Reports. Um, and once again, I will start. So this feels like a bit of a long list, uh, but last week I worked on the calculator project. The guide is coming together nicely, but I haven't looked at it since Friday, so I need to refresh my memory about what exactly is left. The uh, space savings in Flash by splitting type objects remains a work in progress. Um, Damien and Jimmo from MicroPython have been participating in the discussion over there, and what's great is they have two really good ideas about how to take the savings even further, um, which I think what we're going to do is take this pull request, very similar to how it is now, and then let them take these ideas, work on them in MicroPython, and hopefully get another few hundred bytes of savings um, when their version comes back in our next merge. That will mean we'll have to change CircuitPython twice, and there are these kind of irritating repetitive edits that you have to do, but it will be worth it to get the savings now rather than wait for the perfected version. Uh, I made another pull request with a smaller amount of space savings from tweaking string compression, and then I immediately spent some of that space on adding a function called tixms, which is a wraparound tix function that will uh, later be accompanied by a library Adafruit Tix. So if you want to write code that says, turn the LED on or off every 100 milliseconds, this uh, will really help you out because unlike uh, Microtonic NS, mic Microtonic, Monotonic NS, it is available on all the boards, even the smallest. And unlike time.monotonic, it does not lose precision after your board has been on for a while. Uh, rather, it just wraps around every 2 to the 29th milliseconds for reasons that make sense to a programmer. But the Adafruit Tix library is going to help you not think about these things. And it will make it easy to say, has my deadline arrived? Make my deadline be 100 milliseconds uh, later than now, and that sort of thing. And then last for last week, I learned enough about USB HID descriptors to make two descriptors that support N key rollover. And one of them was also compatible with the PC BIOS menu on my Dell laptop. Uh, the first of those I put on my personal blog, and it will be in the, a, the CircuitPython newsletter. And the second one I've just put on a gist, and I think we're going to polish that some more and potentially um, add it onto the USB descriptors guide. We'll see about that. If anybody's interested in the link, ping me after the meeting, and I'll drop that. Um, and thank you. Katni says that time.microtonic and time.nanotonic shall be the new function names. Um, all right, this week I will be wrapping the calculator guide up, hopefully putting that in the moderation queue on Tuesday, and also hopefully wrapping up the type object split. I will be out of the office on Friday, so I'll be front loading my hours for the week just a little bit. Um, and then the other stuff on this list won't probably happen this week. Um, I need to learn how to publish the Adafruit Tix library. This will be different than the libraries I've done to date because it will need to be uploaded to PyPI as well as CircuitPython so that Blinka code can also use Adafruit Tix. And I have not done that with a library, with a bundle library yet. And then another thing that we've been talking about internally is uh, making plans for fixing guides that have incompatibilities uh, in the code between 6 and 7. Uh, some topics include Microlab, on-disk bitmap, and um, the max size of groups. And uh, in the internal meeting, we decided that the Microlab stuff would fall to me and the other stuff would fall to other people. And then up soon, uh, I'm returning to work on capturing JPEG images from the OB2640 camera. And since that is quite enough for one week or even two, I will pass things on to Jerry. Here's the unmute. Thanks, Jeff. I always feel like such a slacker following you. <laughs> um, so uh, I did field a few questions from the forums uh, about the RFM libraries. One of them just on the RFM 69, there was just some, the, the documentation is still out. Some things are outdated. Some of the comments are no longer correct. So I need to go back and scrub those. So I'll, I'll work on a PR for that. Um, and then the RFM 9X, um, I don't know why I never noticed this before, but turns out 
we have a dis an incompatibility with the with the Radiohead library in the Arduino in terms of how we enable the CRC checking by default. So um, I'll bring it up briefly in the weeds, but um, to talk about it in more detail. All right, thank you, Jerry. And now for the person who often makes me feel I'm a slacker, it's Katney. I didn't do nearly as much because I was doing a lot with one thing. Um, so last week I started the MacroPad library, um, created the new rainbow module in CircuitPython as a new home for color wheel and removed color wheel from underscore pixel buff, which is my, the biggest contribution I've done to the core. Um, pretty much, I think I've only changed documentation so far. Um, so now I've actually added a module. And so far today I finished and PR'd the MacroPad library. Um, if you have a MacroPad and you are interested in testing this, let me know. Um, I'll drop a link in the chat when I'm done. Um, it's a wrapper library for a few things and also does all the initialization for the basic stuff um, on the macro pad, similar to the circuit playground library, except it's for macro pad. Um, so this week, uh, I'm going to rename the module I created rainbow to rainbow IO to avoid naming conflicts on PyPI for Blinka. I'm going to ensure rainbow IO is working with Blinka. I'm going to test and merge an outstanding PR on Adafruit PyPixel buff. Um, I say if possible because I think we were waiting on the next version of 7 to be released, and it has been. So it's it's fine to merge now. Um, but I uh, I wanted to wait until that was the case. I need to go make sure that it was the version of 7 being released that was a thing. Um, sort out renaming underscore pixel buff and Adafruit PyPixel buff to match. Um, this is something I need to talk to Dan about uh, because we need to do it in a way that doesn't break everything. Um, also remove color wheel from Adafruit PyPixelBuff uh, when we generate the new Adafruit PixelBuff library, but that is going to go with the renaming thing, so that'll wait until I can talk to Dan. Uh, and then the big thing that I will be doing um, once I'm done with uh, getting Rainbow IO all set up is starting to put together a list of the major changes in 7.0 and the libraries. Um, there have been a lot of breaking changes recently, and we um, need to address existing code that has those changes uh, applied to it. Um, but we need to decide what order, because there's there's just so much, um, we need to decide what order we're going to address these things in. So the plan is to put together a list of all the changes and then prioritize uh, how we want to go about um, dealing with it. And that's what I have so far this week. Thank you. And next we go to maker Melissa. Hello. So last week I worked on a machine learning cat detector guide. Uh, this week I'm going to finish up the guide and then work on the web serial ESP tool some more. And that's it. Thank you. Scott, what are you up to? Hello. So last week was a very short week. Uh, I basically had like three days off. And then I went camping this weekend too, so got lots of lots of summer going on, which is a good thing. Um, but what I did work on last week was I got the serial console on code.circuitpython.org uh, running, and I hooked up a USB serial. And then I got so excited about it, I did BLE serial as well. Um, the site is still very very rough, um, but it's meant to kind of connect all the pieces together so that somebody who's better at HTML and CSS can kind of move everything around to make it make sense, because uh, that's not my skill set. Uh, so this week, I'll be refining that, plus bug hunting some things in CircuitPython. Um, in particular, like the, the reconnect phase of the BLE stuff is a bit slow. Uh, so I want to take a peek into that. Um, and I need to get caught up on the mobile work, specifically the iOS app that's going to connect to this stuff as well. And I do have a, a PR for the very first BLE only board, um, the Microbit V2. And so I want to finish that up. I might have to have us install a new tool because it involves merging two hex files together. Um, so I'm going to have to run that down and figure that out. Uh, but hope to get the Microbit V2 checked in this week. And um, that'll be our very first board that doesn't have USB support. Um, so that'll be interesting. 
you'll need to so modify that, the CircuitPython definition to accommodate that such boards can even exist. That's true. I should put that on the README, shouldn't I? <laughs> yeah, I think so. It's a it's a big change, and we yeah. need to make sure the rules are the same for everybody. Yep. Yeah, that's a good point. I'll uh, I'll have to include that as well. And, and that just you just signed yourself up to be the reviewer as well. Uh oh. Jeff. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I do have a V two, so I can test on hardware. I probably awesome, yeah. I may not have anything that actually works with Bluetooth though, because I'm all Linux. Well, we'll see. Um, what phone do you have? Uh, it's a telephone, an Android. Android. So if you run Chrome on Android, it should... Okay, we'll talk about it later. But yeah. Yeah, so uh, let me just advertise a bit more because one of the my main goals is actually to like do whatever legwork's needed so that people can try this out and, and test it and use it. So if you're interested in being an early adopter for the BLE stuff, basically the code.circuitpython.org requires uh, Chrome, and that's either Chrome on Android. Um, Linux works for for USB, but not for BLE, from what I can tell. You might be able to get it to work, but... Um, and then I've been testing on my Mac from Chrome and Windows from Chrome, and Edge from Chrome should actually work as well. Or Edge from Windows should work too. Um, so it's it's a big big new world and it's going to take a lot of time to get this all refined and people actually using it but um looking for people who want to brave the unknown all right moving back to the top of the alphabet i'll round it out by reading some notes uh, from dan who's not at the meeting as you may have noticed uh released 700 off of four last week with a late fix for display glitches on macro pad and this week, continuing to debug audio issues on RP2040. And lastly, Foamy Guy writes, last week, working on changes related to group max size removal, and this week, working on changes and reviews related to on-disk bitmap pixel shader. And that rounds us out for status updates and brings us to In the Weeds. In the Weeds is a chance for long-form discussion of whatever CircuitPython related topic uh, you have identified. So we take these in the order that they're posted and I will just hand off to Jerry to introduce the first topic. Yeah, thanks. Um, so as I mentioned before, the, the RFM9X library has the CRC disabled by default and um, um, Arduino's Radiohead library has it enabled. And in most things we tried initially or tried to keep the defaults matched up. So my first reaction was, oh, we'll just, you know, we can just change the default. And that's, it's a really trivial thing to do. Um, I do want to just check, you know, if anyone's concerned, because it, I, I don't know if we consider this a breaking change or not, because anyone who's using, say has, you know, units already deployed, then they'd have to go, you know, change, they have to make a change to just get the right default setting. It's not, you know, not a big deal, but it is a, a change. So any are there any concerns with that philosophically for in doing this and is it really considered a rate breaking change i would consider it breaking but it's not a big deal like make it a major version change just so that people know to like look okay um but don't feel like you shouldn't do it okay uh that, that, you know, i'll get a prn soon for it then thanks all right thanks jerry uh, next up, I have an item from Dave P. Is your uh, microphone working, Dave? Can you hear me? Yes. Well, then it's working. Um, so I ran into a situation where the the SDK or the RP2040, the Pico, behaves differently than MicroPython for doing a restart on a state machine. And the question is, which way do we want it to work? Do we have a separate way to request that the program counter be reset? Well, the only way to do it would be to manually, and, and this is the way MicroPython does it, is to exec a jump back to uh, the first instruction. That makes sense to me in terms of like if you're starting it back up. What what is our API? I don't even remember. All the API is a, is just 
calling restart. Okay, yeah, I, I would I would have it start back at program counter. Okay, so behave the same way MicroPython is. Yeah, I think so. Okay. I will do that then. Generally in CircuitPython, I like to be pretty strict about like starting from the same place over and over again, which is why I'm a stickler, why we don't have state carryover from code.py into the REPL. Okay. And I will, uh, I'll work on a pull request for that then. Awesome. Thank yeah. you so much, Dave. Thanks, Dave. All right. That brings us to the wrap up of the meeting. Let me just find my notes. Uh, so this has been the CircuitPython weekly meeting for July 12th, 2021. A big thank you to everyone who participated. If you want to support Adafruit and CircuitPython, and those of us that work on CircuitPython, please consider purchasing from the Adafruit shop at adafruit.com. The video of this meeting will be released on YouTube at youtube.com slash Adafruit, and the podcast will be available on major podcast services. It will also be featured in the Python for Microcontrollers newsletter. Visit adafruitdaily.com to subscribe. The next meeting will be held as usual on Monday at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific, making it the 19th of July. The meeting is held on the Adafruit Discord, which you can join by going to adafru.it slash discord. To be notified about the meeting and any changes to the time or day, you can ask to be added to the CircuitPythonistas role on Discord. We hope to see you all next week. Thanks, everybody.